Hi viewers. We're back in the greenhouse today because as lots of you will be aware, Roger and I have been trying to sort out to get these um, information on these um, hot box sulfume burners. And as he said, I already had one, but I used it before and covered everything in a sulphur dust and it was just awful. Anyway, after the conversations that he explained to you, I'd had with the um, technical guy at Hotbox International, who then also sent me a more new information, which I forwarded to Roger as well. Um, I'm much happier and I now know that I was using it wrong before with the incorrect instructions because the one I ordered before was not from a retailer, it was from a nurseryman who gave me the wrong information. But after reading all the stuff and looking at what we were going to do, what I've done uh, because obviously mine has to go outside, unlike Roger's, which needs to be in his conservatory grow room. I need it out here because of um, botrytis on the frags and just the, the problem with mealybugs, aphids and the like. Just bugs, general bugs, that are really proving problematic and not being able to sort. The slugs are just a nightmare. But we're getting on top of that by preventing them from coming in. The ones I'm finding now are the ones that are still baby ones. And eventually I will come to the end of those. Um, so, because I'm pretty sure they won't, the sulphur won't gas the snail, the snails or slugs. It could if it liked, I'd be quite happy. But... Um, no, the main important thing is because I, I wasn't prepared to waste money again on predator mites, which just didn't work and were far too expensive. So I got this out and it's a good five years since I've used it, possibly more than that. A good five at least. And I ordered a new sulphur cup because this one my husband had damaged. So I ordered a new one and set it up yesterday and obviously what we've got is it needs to be as Rogers pointed out three foot from the roof and we can go up on here no not down up and that chain takes you all the way up into the apex. It's just over three foot because I measured it yesterday. Something else for me to bump into, knock me head on when I get up, but never mind. What I did, because obviously I have to leave the heating on out here, I can't afford to chop it off in this weather. So the heating, the heater is down there, under there. So that doesn't interfere with it in any way, shape or form. But what I did, because this fan runs quite well, uh, this runs all day and all night. What I did was change the timer um, for the fan to be off when the sulfume kicks in. So I ran it last night from 12 till two this morning. And um, as you can see, we've got melted. Um, sulfur. So I'm going to run it for three nights on the trot from 12 to 3 and then I'm going to um, going to turn it off and just do it once a week maybe twice a week but spread it out so and then we can see what sort of a difference it makes obviously there are still bugs around at this time of year but not as many but they, I still find mealy bugs so um it will be good to, you know, see what's happening. And this one doesn't really take much effort. I need to find another timer to 
put the plug in too for the prizes. Um, other one because the new sulfur box is coming tomorrow because I'm setting one up out in the front half and I'm going to once I've done it out in the front half I'm going to take it next door and I'm going to do it in the um, cool house because believe it or not even at this time of year I still find aphids on flowers um, I am in the enviable position that I can leave this or just unhook it when I'm not using it and then I can put it on that shelf up there to get it out of the way. Leave it plugged in because the timer can still run. Um, because the electricity on that is minimal. I don't want to have to keep changing the timer. Um, so when it's done its bit these three nights, I shall just pick it up and I shall just stick it up on that shelf. What I forgot to say was that... Aside from the fact there was no residue at all, um, there were, considering this is a sealed greenhouse and nowhere for the fumes to escape from, it dissipated quite well because all there was out here was the rotten egg smell. And when I came through the front section of the greenhouse, you could smell that something was different, but coming into the back house and obviously I have no intention of venting this greenhouse at this time of year because of the um, heating and the like so I don't want the vents open or the windows because they're automatic so I decided we'll just see what happened and there wasn't a problem afterwards um, unlike Roger I can walk away and leave it and not come back for 24 hours um, so that's a big plus for me a big big plus Right, this hot box, new hot box came to the intermediate house, yes, house yesterday, just before I went to the orchid meeting, so it didn't get set up. It's set up now. The other one's had three days, this will have three days, and the one from the warm house I should do sort out tomorrow, and it will go into the cool house and do three days in there. So I don't need three, but two makes my life easier, so... Um, and then I'll reduce the times to twice a week, but not consecutive days. And then I'll go down to once a week if it works, and we'll see what happens when more bugs come. But watch this space, as they say. Right, we're back. I've decided in the end to keep the bits of this video until I've got to this last bit. Well, it's not even the last bit, because it's continual use now. Um, we're now two weeks in and I've done all three greenhouses. Um, the first time, three nights. The second time, two. I've done another three nights. I decided to do another three nights. And then the next time it will be one night. This is on its third night tonight. We're in the intermediate house here and this is the new box the um, warm end obviously was done first the other hot box is in the cool house that's done three nights there and it's on time off then it had another we had one in another three nights on the warm and then I've moved the one from the warm up here do this three nights and then we will go back sort of Wednesday and do two nights in the warm house then two nights one will do two nights here so on and so forth without dragging it out too much and what I have found um, looking at the plants because when you've got a dendrobium especially if you've got young growths on a dendrobium is there one here I can show you? Yes, there is. This is a kiki that I'm growing. It's not, it's not really got short enough ones. Here's one that's got short enough ones. We've got little baby bits growing. And on the new growth, mealybugs love to get into dendrobiums at that time. And... Um, I had a lot of 
Oh, so much Spanish moss. I had a lot of um, mealybugs problem in that end house. And I had major problems here in this intermediate house with um, mealybugs and the neophanesias where they were eating the... Um, my, my flowers being chomped as they came up. But when I was doing the usual dendrobium checks, because now I, when I pull out the dendrobiums, I specifically pull out ones with young growths on so that I can check the young growths to make sure there's no mealybugs in there. And whilst I did that with a two on, what's today? A few days ago, anyway, I give up with the days. Um, whilst I was checking and I got the, my paintbrush, my small paintbrush to um, treat them because I've got an in contact, on contact uh, bug spray I was going to get them with and I put my paintbrush on them and it fell off and I thought that's dead then I looked a bit more and found another one same thing happened so it's working is all I can say it is working the mealy bugs are being killed um, when I checked the other end of the greenhouse for something further away, I still found live, but they were very sluggish. So I'm definitely going to keep this up at the moment. Once I've done this coming week, where we start off another two day cycle um, and get round to that, then I'm going to go down to one day, but twice a week and just keep it going and I'm going to keep it going all the way through the summer and in the vain hope that we might finally be cracking something here and bring the bugs under control because I shelled out an awful lot of money on predator mites last year and the year before and they can't keep up with it um, and you'd have to spend an inordinate amount of money to, to, to put them in in the quantities that they want and I can't afford to do that and the trouble with here, as well, is when you've got mealybugs and you've got a medium like this, they get in that medium and they get in amongst these roots. And that's where it all starts to happen. Well, I've put a lot of the mealybug and put a lot of the mealybugs in bark. Yes, OK, I don't think so. I've put a lot of the um, neophanesias in bark. And when I repot again, this spring um, I'm putting more in bark and I'm still going to keep some in moss because it looks they look good ones that do well in moss I will look keep them in there but if it's something else that deters the mealybugs then so be it it will have to be that and they won't look so nice not mounded but they will grow on nicely which is what I want them to do and I just want to see my flowers they only come once a year it's not much to ask is it but i'm going to go and put this on to the end of that video because i've got another video to do tomorrow because there's lots of other things happening now spring is sprunging as they say it hasn't sprung but it's certainly thinking about it and i have done a bit of repotting today plants that desperately needed doing and hopefully um we can move into this year. I've got an awful lot of work to do moving into this year with repotting, so we'll get that underway. But the main thing was the hot box. It is a flipping nuisance having them hung there because I'm forever knocking them. And if I'm on the floor, bending down or on the floor sweeping up and then I come up, I bang my head on them. But I can't, it, I can't even smell the smell anymore. Um, if my husband comes out here to get me, the first thing he can smell, he says, when he opens the door, is the sulphur. But I can't smell it, and the smell is not as much as it was. And I also took in a vander to one of the people of the Orchid Society. Um, it was too big for where it was, and I've got enough big plants out there. I didn't need another one. And I let her have it because she grows hers indoors. And I said to her, I said... You need to take this home and see if you can smell sulphur when you get it in your house. I said, because my husband says, 
when I brought it in the house that he could smell sulfur and I've sniffed it and I can't smell it. She had a good sniff and she can't smell it, so um, we shall see. Maybe it's just a little bit more subjective, but do you know what? I'll suffer the smell of the sulfur if it keeps the dratted bugs at bay. Um, and oh, what a faff it is with the powder. What a mess it makes trying to get it into this cup from a plastic bag. And I've got a big scoop to do it, but it's such a fine powder. Um, it just gets everywhere. So I have to put gloves on now to do it because I was just making a mess. But I will um, leave this there and I will do the other one in a day or so. But I just wanted to get through these videos to show you what I was doing with the hot boxes for those that are interested. And I'll catch you on the next one because Project Terrarium is a well underway and I will have that to video soon because we are putting um, the last bits in it of the media, not the media, the um, innards before, the decorating of the tank before we put the plants in. So there's a lot, I don't know where I'm going to find time to do all this, but there's a lot to be done and I shall film that as well. So um, I'll catch you on the next one. So look after yourselves, stay safe. Bye bye now.